Now to an update on the Gilgo Beach murder case. The case is moving towards a trial, but two defense requests are th slowing things down. The defense for suspect Rex Hewerman is asking for more time. They're challenging nuclear DNA testing that has never been used in a New York court of law. The judge allowed two more weeks to download a huge amount of data. This is novel information. Uh, they call it science. We're disputing that. And it's prevented people from dying from disease. It's detected diseases. It's used in amniocentesis. It's identified war dead. This is sound science. Another issue, whether there will be one trial or five trials in the murders of seven women. Now, the defense wants separate trials, saying juries are swayed when allegations are put all together. But prosecutors say there is overlapping evidence. So what is this DNA testing at the center of their debate? Here to explain is Michael Marciano, Director of Research for the Forensic and National Security Sciences Institute at Syracuse University. Welcome. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for having me. So what is the DNA testing they're talking about, and how does this work? That's a great question. So we typically focus on nuclear DNA in forensic science. This is nothing new. Uh, it's been done for decades and decades. Uh, what the difference here is, it's something we call whole genome sequencing. And actually, this could be a more sensitive type of testing, where rather than look at 24 to 27 areas of the DNA, which is what we typically do in forensic cases, we look at thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of different uh, variations in the DNA. So if you think about your DNA, a lot of people see it as a sequence of letters, right? We're looking for differences in those letters. We share most of our DNA uh, with each other. Right? We're looking for those differences, and those differences can provide information as to the identity of an individual. So what is this type of testing being used for already? Uh, that's another great question. This has been used for uh, many decades, uh, and it's come into its own in the last 10 to 15 years due to increases in uh, computational computer power, the ability to design instruments that could do this, uh, now you can get your personal genome, which is whole genome sequencing, for under $1,000. These are used for at-home DNA kits, identifying human remains, and uh, disease detection. So this is widely used outside of forensics and is not a new technology. And like you said, you know, testing is widely used, but it's not been used in a New York court of law yet. So does using it in this case, if it goes through with Rex Hewerman, change the game? So I think it does change the game in, in a sense. Uh, if we look back uh, to the O.J. Simpson case, uh, actually, we saw the introduction of a new technology called PCR-based testing, which is now the standard, the gold standard for forensic DNA testing. Uh, whole genome sequencing uh, is uh, available in uh, uh, private companies right now for use uh, in criminal investigations. It's not widespread. But this could be one of those uh, uh, critical moments in uh, moving forward in forensic DNA analysis uh, that brings this to the mainstream. Now, at one point, the defense called this DNA testing magic. And now, you know, we don't know about that, but we do know that this type of DNA testing is an exciting development for science and law, right? It is. We're very excited to see this uh, start to be uh, introduced into uh, court, the court system. This is the future, uh, without a doubt. Uh, things that uh, innovations in forensic DNA analysis take time because it goes through the court system, and that benefits uh, the uh, defense uh, as well as the prosecution uh, in the need to vet and ensure that these technologies are reliable. Uh, and that is what this hearing uh, that we're expecting in the next few weeks, I believe, uh, to cover. Is this generally accepted? Is this high-quality science? Michael Marciano, Director of Research, Forensic, and National Security Sciences Institute at Syracuse University. Thank you so much for breaking it down for us. And we're going Thank to continue. You, we're going to continue to cover any new developments in the Gilgo Beach murders on air and online at cbsnewyork.com.